Hello friends, and welcome to my new video, in which I'll tell you some amazing stories. But before we begin, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button on this video. Also, don't forget to write your thoughts about these stories in the comments. Let's get started. The first story is, I quit because my boss called me a liar and accused me for no reason. My family left with me. Three weeks ago, yes, three weeks, it was so horrible that I couldn't even stay for a month. I ended up working at a warehouse for a company that marketed organic products. I'm not sure whether it was just me, but I felt bad doing it because most of it was snake oil, such as a spray that promised to wake you up in minutes, some oil that claimed to calm you down, and things like that. The first two days were fine, strangely enough. If you've ever worked in a warehouse, it's what you'd anticipate. But there was a catch. For approximately a week and a half, we picked and packed, which meant scanning orders and sorting them, then scanning and packing them for shipping. They wised up after that, and we ended up separating into pickers and packers. Isn't that fantastic? No, not really. With these developments came new issues. My family and I, as well as my girlfriend, all worked there, and we all ended up as packers. I enjoyed being a packer until we heard the outrageous figures they demanded for it. 100 units per hour. That is, 100 separate goods are delivered through the system in their unique orders per hour. But you can't truly hit a goal when the business is completely unorganized, can you? So soon after the new goal was implemented, my family and I were chastised for not meeting our targets. And we soon discovered why. To meet the target, you needed some decently sized orders, which meant no five item orders including toilet paper, which they did sell, but it was only made of bamboo and sugarcane. No, you needed these massive orders of 15 to 20 small products that scanned easily, fit in a compact box, and were a breeze to push out of the building. We had two sets of rollers, one on top for containers for orders for us to pack, and one on the bottom for pushing orders to the general labor people, who would simply place the products onto a pallet, wrap them up, and have them ship out. Now, my task was to scan, wrap, pack, close the box, and push it down the line. Sounds fairly simple, right? Wrong. My family and I were at the tail end of the line, right next to the general labor folks, so all we got were the incredibly little orders that didn't allow you to even make the goal however hard you tried. So what did our boss try? Carts. They'd load up carts and deliver us 12 orders a piece. We should be able to hit these figures by now, right? Sonny Jim, you're wrong again. They assigned two of the general labor guys to bring everyone carts, but they chose the ones who lived together with a handful of packing workers. What a happy coincidence. So when my dad and I, we worked back to back in our station, received these two items, three item orders, we were falling well short of our targets which prompted our leads to come over and question why, when we mentioned we hadn't gotten anything decent all night, they just accepted that the area wasn't going to function as well as they hoped. Remember, this is merely the conclusion of week two. Now, week three begins, and I'm no longer looking forward to coming into work every day. I ended up buying an MP3 player for like 15 bucks and loading it up with creepy pastas and weird horror stories to get me through the evenings. When Wednesday rolled around, my mind was so flustered by how horrible the apartment is that I neglected to pack a box correctly, so it came back. Now I'll have to explain the following a bit, because I didn't mention it anywhere at the beginning. My mistake. Now, I have bad anxiety. I tend to think negatively about myself at work, thinking things like, I'm not working hard enough, I'm going to get fired, and so on. So, when they return the package... I was a little annoyed, but I just sat there and gathered my breath, not realizing that this one small move would kick off a crazy chain reaction. I come in the next day, and the job is still terrible, with equally terrible orders as usual. They ended up offering VTO, voluntary time off, to a few packers and pickers when there was an entire night's worth of work, and these workers only got to go home after two hours on shift. Now that I'm irritated that all these people are going while there's so much to do, I just mutter to myself and my dad about 
how we all could have been done early if they just kept us all here. But apparently, we had a little less than we typically did. Our box rollers, on the other hand, were not motorized. We were the ones that pushed them. The same workers who were shouted at for not meeting a goal had to stop mid-packing to solve line jams, push boxes, and do other things. But when they gave out VTO, they left a massive line of empty stations behind me. So for the rest of the night, I was hauling butt just to meet my goal and keep these dang boxes moving. I was complaining, of course, but in my head, I kept thinking that the more boxes I pushed, the less TP I had to pack up. Those packs of toilet paper were annoying, so to say the least. My dad ended up yelling at the boss who told me to stop pushing all. Now he put me in a tiny boardroom with him and another lead and questioned why I freaked out at the one boss, which I didn't, and I told him so, and he brought up the night before. I have anxiety. I explained, which he dismissed as nonsense and wondered why I was flipping out on the boss again. Now that I was on the point of a nervous breakdown and didn't want to be fired, I simply decided, right then and there, to quit. I told my mother what had happened and walked out of the building. My family all left the next morning, and me and my girlfriend hung out playing PS4 till he told me my temp service that my family didn't clean up their stations after he kicked them out to drive me home. I was astonished because the guy had been incredibly nice up until that point, even giving us a restart when our car chose to die. I did some research on the company and sought for a location to share this story. And it comes out that Grove has been faking reviews on Indeed and a few other sites, always gets five stars, basically praising the job as if it were a fantastic chance and acting as if nothing ever goes wrong. A couple of other things I wanted to mention. Some of their imitation reviews stated that they provided refreshments. However, they do not. Instead, they had vending machines. I think free food is too much for a company that charges you $10 for some crappy toilet paper. According to one review, the job is relaxed. However, it clearly is not. They are always on your butt about figures and the company goal. Finally, I treated my boss with the utmost respect until my last night. And then the guy has the audacity to accuse me of lying and doing things that I was accused of and didn't do. It appears that I misplaced my respect. Working at a disorganized workplace can be quite frustrating, but your experience sounds like a real roller coaster ride. Who knew that packing organic products could be so challenging? I bet those organic calming oils come in handy after a long day at work. It's funny how your family and your girlfriend all ended up working in the same place. Did you all decide to make the workplace disorganized together, or was it just a happy coincidence? And what about those toilet paper rolls made of bamboo and sugarcane? I'm not sure I would want to wipe my bum with something that could be used to build a treehouse or make a cake. It sounds like your bosses were really clueless about how to manage their workers. Instead of providing you with the right orders to meet the goal, they loaded you up with carts full of tiny orders. What's next? Unicycles instead of carts? I think you should have suggested that to your boss. It would have made work a lot more interesting. And the icing on the cake, the voluntary time off that left you and your dad working like crazy to keep the line moving. I bet those empty stations felt like a punch in the face. Maybe they should have given you a voluntary massage instead. I hope that you brought home some calming oil to deal with all the stress that this must have put on you. Overall, your workplace experience sounded like a challenge, but you survived it with flying colors. I'm sure you'll have plenty of stories to share with your future coworkers. Just make sure you pack some extra TP. The next story is, The HOA forbids me to have a motorhome, but I'm not even part of the HOA. Hello everyone. The story about the HOA is from my father, but I also took a fairly active role in it. If anything, you need to know we live in Europe, not the United States. When my parents both retired, they were really bored. They didn't know what to do, so they decided it would be a good idea to just go out and travel. It just so happens that they don't respect airplanes. I don't know why, but they really don't like the atmosphere in airplanes. It's not that they are scared of something, they just supposedly don't like it. 
The best thing we came up with together was to buy a motorhome. So to do this, my father had to sell his two regular cars, but he was not too upset about it. They both got really excited about the whole motorhome idea. I've frankly never seen them so happy in such a long time. After the first trip to the neighboring country, they decided to take a break from their travels and return to their home neighborhood. I should add here that they are not part of the HOA. This HOA was created long after they started living here. They never agreed to anything and never, ever signed anything. They had no other options but to put this motorhome in their own backyard. You'd think, what problems with that could there be? It's their private property, so they should be able to do what they want with it, right? Well, the HOA thinks otherwise. Soon after they brought it home, a lady came to visit them and introduced herself as a representative of the HOA. She had a list of rules for the HOA, which, as I recall, was created some 20 years after my parents built their house there. While showing me all the rules, she started shouting that no one has the right to keep any trailer or motorhome on their land. They explained that it was horrible, ugly, and an eyesore. My father was stunned. He just asked, why the F do you have a problem with something on my property? I'm not even a part of your stupid HOA. Especially since it's in the back and it's covered by a fence. In the original, it was swear-free and very intelligent. The HOA lady could not answer and just ran away. A few hours later, though, my father saw a letter from the HOA saying that my mother and father had been fined. I don't remember the exact amount, but it was a lot. After I ignored them, they sent several more fines. Of course, my parents didn't pay anything and threatened them with a lawsuit, which they would definitely win because they're not even a part of the HOA, like I said, so they can't be fined legally. After they explained all of this to the HOA representatives, they eventually stopped receiving fines. Well, it's good that they left you alone, but they are still like friggin' hyenas. They cling to people and don't let go until the bitter end. I don't understand how they don't feel sorry for themselves. They're not only harming you, but themselves. Everyone has a life, so why waste it on quarrels, especially meaningless ones? What is this trend of HOAs harassing people who are not part of the HOA? Do they want their money or like what? I, I really don't understand. Maybe someone can explain it to me in the comments. It should be obvious to me that if a person is not in the HOA, then he or she is very unlikely to fall for any of your tricks. No one's going to agree to give you money or their independence for the sake of a stupid HOA to which they have zero connection. The next story is, the lady demands something, doesn't get it for me, and calls the cops. What the? So, I had a visitor who called the cops on me. Anyone who performs night auditing and security is permitted to park their automobile on the rim of the large carport. It's still passable by car. This is convenient for us because we prefer to keep an eye on our cars during these times. Well, Years ago, I had my car tampered with twice while I parked farther away when doing 3 to 11 p.m. Anyway, every now and then, a guest will temporarily park in my place behind security in the carport while they check in. No problem, I can park in the loading bay till it clears about 50 feet away. However, shortly after clocking in, an extremely irate woman arrived at the FD and requested that a car be towed because it was parked in a handicapped spot without a sticker. Well, she pulled a picture from her phone, and the car was mine. I told her that it was my car, possibly a mistake here, but it wasn't a handicap spot. I informed her that it was a loading area, which was normally utilized for deliveries such as food trucks. It's next to the handicap spots, but there's no handicap sign. It's roughly three times the size of a standard parking spot. It has vertical lines running from top to bottom. Well, it's not any kind of parking spot, the lady replied. Well. I agreed and then asked her why, if she could admit it, she was treating it like a parking spot then. We repeated this stupid loop of conversation since she wouldn't reply to me with a straight answer. She kept making condescending and arrogant facial expressions as if she didn't believe me, the guy working behind the desk at the property. She strode loudly to the front door, declaring that she was going to tell her husband. Please do, I called after her. As she was leaving, I overheard her say to someone, you're going to flip your lid, the guy said. 
By the way, the husband never came in or called me. I noticed another person on the camera, but it was dark and they swiftly went off to building C. We have four different buildings here. After around five minutes, my security guard inquired as to why the police were present. I felt apprehensive and thought, she better not have called the cops. Well, indeed, she did. The officer stated that they received a call regarding this issue from someone who did not want to be identified. There's not even a handicap sign there, he added as he parked on the edge of the carport. Well, we ended up just chatting about it and found the whole thing amusing. The cop could tell I wasn't in a handicapped parking area from 50 feet away in the dark. He brushed it off, saying, don't worry about it. And even if there was a legitimate case, it was up to the property owner to have a car towed or removed, not the police. I believe she knew she was in the wrong, since she refused to even reveal her identity to the cops. The entitlement of some people never ceases to amaze me. This story is a perfect example of someone who thinks they have the right to take matters into their own hands without any regard for the truth. Calling the cops on someone for simply parking in a loading bay is not only ridiculous, but it's also a complete and utter waste of the police's time and resources. The fact that this woman refused to identify herself only highlights her cowardice and lack of conviction in her own actions. It's clear to me that she had no idea what she was talking about and was just looking for something to complain about. I applaud the police officer for seeing through this nonsense and handling the situation with humor and understanding. The last story is, Old Job tried to get back at me for poaching a top performer. Well, they then threw a tantrum when they realized that they no longer held any power. I can't recall if I had previously discussed this gem. On my birthday, a few months back, my workplace wrote me up. One thing was that they were completely unaware. The most important thing, though, was that every single one of my employees informed me every day that I was responsible for keeping the business solvent. It's a shame that my employer and his boss got along and frequented the same bars. When the boss's boss remarked that I should find my passion and then gave instances of her passions, I simply made the decision to go. It wasn't until my boss brought up my new son that the area manager said, Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I ended it there. Giving them the benefit of the doubt, I replied that I wasn't sure whether I wanted to stay there when they asked me if I still wanted to be there. Anyway, I left with notice, and the day after I did, one of my best performers, whom my boss treated like complete trash, found work at a division of the business I had been hired by. He asked if he could tell them that I poached him, and I responded I didn't give a crap because we were both a little crusty about it, even though I had nothing to do with it. Well, my boss advised their boss to take action after they found out about it. They reportedly searched for days for something that they could do to me, but in the end, they couldn't find anything. Even within their own organization, they were unable to reclassify me as non-hireable. I assume if I ever did apply for a job again, they would get in touch with my prior boss to see how I was doing, but I have no idea why in the world I would try to return to that crap hole. Anyway, when they realized they had no electricity, they supposedly started wailing and frothing at the mouth and tried to phone my new employer. HR informed them that it would be a serious ethical breach to even acknowledge that they worked there after they had been moved about continuously, since no one knew what to do with them. People, this is why there are labor regulations. Utilize them to your benefit. Well, 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 looks like someone's boss caught a case of the tantrums. Maybe they should try some deep breathing exercises or a timeout in their office. It's always funny to me when people in power lose their control. Is it not? I guess they couldn't handle the fact that they couldn't boss you around anymore. And now they're trying to stir up trouble with your new employer. That's just sad. It's like they're trying to cling on to the last shred of power that they have over you. Sorry, bosses. Looks like you're going to have to find someone else to boss around because this person is moving on up. Thanks for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe, like, and comment. See you soon.